hardest, man. Detroit versus everybody, man. Detroit, we rep the hardest, man. We gain the hardest. You know what? You know what it is, man. Detroit, CJ, holla at your boy when we get home. Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze from the Wild, the WBC heavyweight champion of the world. I like to give a big shout out to CJ Goodfellow, Sports TV, Bomb Squad, man. All right, man, let's talk about the Joseph Diaz and uh, Devin Haney. Devin Haney won unanimous decision. Um, was I surprised? Uh, one thing I was, I, was, I was surprised by is how he didn't work on – I wouldn't even say focus, bro. It's just to the point where they, he infatuated with knockouts. And somebody need to tell him punchers are born and not made. Okay. The looking for the knockout is what got him in trouble in this fight. That's it. Looking for the knockout is what got him in trouble. Had he not looked for the knockout, he would have kept using his jab. He would have kept check hooking. He would have kept doing turning Joseph Diaz. He would have kept scoring. And maybe he would have found the knockout. But looking for the knockout, it never goes well when you look for the knockout. And that tarnished his uh his display tonight. It tarnished his fight tonight a little bit. You know, but Joseph Diaz was too short, too stubby, um, didn't use his jab, wasn't explosive enough, didn't have enough power to compete. And that was the fight in a nutshell. All right. Well, uh, check out the fight reaction playlist. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. All my social media subscription, Twitter, surpass, whether Facebook and Instagram. If you want to reach out for your business question, power response, your video plus, want to make a financial donation, cash app, CJ Goods, B13, Venmo, CJ Goods, B13, PayPal in the description. All right. Roll in the bottom of the screen. And um, that's the only issue with Devin. When Devin was focused on piling up rounds in the first six or seven rounds, he used his jab. Um, only thing I would say he didn't do enough was, was use his one-two. You know, his jab was good enough. I would like to see him kind of take a little power off the jab and then set up the right hand right down the middle. But he touched the body good. I mean, he set up the right hand down the middle when he threw it. He turned his opponent. I mean, he just didn't let him back him in corner. He turned with a check hook. He turned with good footwork. He gave his foot on the outside of Joseph Diaz's lead foot when he was ready to attack. And the best thing about what he did was that he turned him. Now, while he got kicked with a jab, you know, he just admired his work a little bit much, too much. You know, Joseph Diaz hit with a couple of jabs, but you don't get hit. But um, I, I just would tell him to, to keep sliding to his right this fight to get away from that jab. You know, but then the hand, you had to worry about the, the overhand left. So I think he'd rather eat a jab than that overhand left. But he was doing everything he needed to do. He was turning them. He was firing the one, two. He was touching the body. Um, found the uppercut, punching around the guard. IQ was high tonight. I just think the only part that the IQ was low was that when he felt that JoJo couldn't hurt him and he started trying to look for the knockout, load up on one shot. That's, that's the only thing. It's okay if you're not a puncher, but you got enough respect, you know, the, the ultimate respect about your puncher power. You got enough respect where these dudes won't run up on you early and just walk through you. You know, maybe you need to have a conversation with, with Paula Malinaji. Malinaji didn't go out there trying to be a puncher. If Paula Malinaji had Devin a punch of punching power, Malinaji might be undefeated for his career. It might be one of the greatest fighters of all time. So you can punch. You don't have guys just walking through you. You know, that's how you know you can't punch and that your puncher power is an issue. When, when guys walk through your punches, that's how you know it's an issue. When guys just able to close the gap and they able to, they willing to take anything you got, Joseph Diaz wasn't willing to do that tonight. And what Joseph Diaz didn't do tonight was he didn't jab on his way in. He didn't slip to get on the inside. Uh, he didn't time Devin Haney. And the thing about timing Devin Haney, without him using the jab, he would have had to reach. And what he had to reach, I think Devin had enough power to turn his lights out. If he didn't, Joseph Diaz would have mounted the comeback or would have mounted an offense attack a lot early, and he couldn't get past the length, the speed, the pinpoint accuracy of his punches. And Devin did everything he needed to do. Every time I said do something, or especially when he wasn't looking for the knockout early in the fight, the middle of the fight, he 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 was scoring. It would work. It's just it's, it's fine. He could have won the jab. He could have won this fight with a jab. I said he could have just popped the jab the whole fight, you know. But you know he used the short left hook, check hook. He used the right hand up and down. I'd like to see him use the right hand a little bit more down the middle. But other than that, just Joseph Diaz didn't use a jab. Joseph Diaz didn't get in his toes. He was a plotter. You fight somebody like, like Devin, you got to get on your toes and you got to faint. You got to jab to get on the inside. 
You know, the thing about Devin, he knew how to hold. He knew how to spin his opponent like a turnstile. I mean, he's real school, and I think everything he picked up from Eddie Mustafa, Muhammad, Floyd Sr., Jeff Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather Jr., Ben Davis, and Mickey Bay, everything he picked up, I think, you know, you know, started to kind of come full circle for him. So, you know, it would be a shame if he, he trained with those guys and he didn't know how to uh, hold and, you know, turn guys. And that's how you fight somebody. You know, that's how you fight somebody that uh that's a, that's aggressive. You keep turning them. You know, and those ones don't get off me punches. Those are punches to say, you know, I'm trying to hurt you punches. But it would be beautiful if he took something off. But he won 116, 112, which I thought was a little bit close. 117, 111, 117, 111. So that was that was that was that was fine as far as the scorecards. But you know, dealing with somebody like JoJo, you just keep turning them, especially when you won't get on his toes, especially you won't use his jab. It's, it's nothing to worry about. You know, he was trying to use his jab when he had Devin on the ropes, but you got to use your jab, you know, when you're out in the middle of the ring, when you close the distance, when you're moving backwards, when you're using angles, you got to keep using the jab. And that's something that uh, Joseph got at home. And, you know, like I said before, um, the overhead left, he only, he only caught Devin with, with meaningful shit. I'm not sure he heard him, but he only caught him because Devin was looking for one big shot. And that started to start, that started to turn around the seventh, eighth, ninth round, tenth round. 11, 12 round, he started looking for one big shy. And, you know, they got to tell us that he can't, got tell Bill, you can't go out there looking for the knockout. I know you want to keep up with Tank doing, but you fighting higher level of opposition than the guy in Tank. You fight a higher level opposition than the guy in Ryan. And they blessed with power. That's okay. Power, if you think about power in the sport of boxing, power tends to fade out on the elite level. You know, eventually we didn't see Deontay Water power fading, but, you know, somebody was able to take it in Tyson Fury. You know, uh, we didn't see, you know, j Rock. I mean, I mean, Julian Jackson, you know, his power carried to the elite level of, of boxing. That's that's an anomaly. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about all the great power punchers. You know, even Brother Duran, he had to get into a chess mess with Sugar Ray Leonard. You know what I'm saying? So you can talk about all the great punch, punchers, you know, in history. A lot of them went the distance. A lot of them found somebody that could take their shot. Sonny Liston was, was, a, was a fear. Uh, puncher. I mean, Jack Johnson can punch Rocky Marciano, even though he did retire. You know, he can punch Joe Lewis, you know, like Lion Killer said, he's considered the greatest puncher of all time. You know, eventually his day came. So power, power usually fades. And we talking about on average when fighters step up to the championship, true championship level. You know, Lucas Matisse, he was seen as the machine at 140, you know, then he didn't want to fight him. So he, he didn't fight Lamont for the IBF to say he was ranking the WBC. And he found Danny Garcia, and Danny Garcia was able to take what he was dishing. You know, so there's been so many punches. British Crash Fire knocking out Amir Khan. I mean, they come and they go. Arthur Abraham looked destructive at 160 and going to 68 to, to destructively stop Jermaine Taylor. Kelly Pavlik looked like a power puncher. I mean, you can go on and on. Canelo looks like a power puncher. It's always somebody in boxing that can either take it and catch you, or they can take it, they give you hell. That's one. If I say if anything I, I I learned from boxing is that it's somebody that can take what you dish it. You know, and the question is, can you take it as a puncher when you dish it? That's the question for all the great punchers uh, uh, throughout boxing, from the listings, from the foreigners to the, you know, to the Jack Johnson, Sonny Listings, Norton uh, uh, Shavers, and, and and Mike Tyson's of the world. I mean, can you take it, Samuel Peters? Can you take it? Can you take it? We know you can give it. Can you take it, man? And that's always a question that, that has to be, you know, either for Devin Haney and JoJo when he was a prospect, can you take a punch? If you can't take a punch into that in boxing, you better be a hell of a puncher. You better catch your opponents before they cut you. You know, it was a question about Keith Thurman. We didn't learn that until he fought Manny Pacquiao. You know, they, when they can dish it and they can give it, man, can they take it? And throughout history, it's always been some able to take somebody power, man. Marcy Allen had a great overhand, right? It'd been interesting to see if he did come back and fought some prime opponents. But I mean, Tyson looked destructive. It didn't like he was gonna, gonna stop rolling. I mean, before former fought Muhammad Ali. So yeah, man, when you get to that elite level, that punch and power, it matters, but it doesn't it doesn't factor into knockouts a lot of the time. When you get to that upper echelon level, it factors into um it it works, it, you know, it, it works, you know, it, it wears guys down, it causes cuts, 
it still happens to cause knockouts, but it's hard to knock out elite guys. It's hard to knock out the Lomachenkos, the Tanks, the Comies, you know, the Lopez, the Cambosos, and it's hard to knock those guys out. But if anything, uh, I take away from Devin from this fight is a, is a learner experience, is, you know, fuck power. That's when these fights, and, and, and when you're not looking for something, that's when you tend to find it. You're not looking for the knockout, that's when you tend to you find it. And for Joseph Diaz, may continue to be a warrior, he fight anybody, you know, and uh, this, um, this stock still rising. This one still want to see him in there with Comey Lomachenko and whoever else down there, uh, Isaac Cruz, Tank. So, you know, like I said, a good fighter, just, you know, Devin Haney had the dimensions of a welterweight tonight. And that caused mass hysteria in the ring tonight. But, you know, if anything he did better, could have did better was obviously he took more chances, used a jab, you know, stalking Devin Haney, get on his toes a little bit. But, you know, it's an learning experience, the second fight at the weight. But overall, you find that Devin Haney, you know, is resilient. And Devin Haney is as good as advertised. And like I said, the next process for him is his maturation as a fighter is to, is to you know, fall in love with his attributes, with his height, his length, his speed, his athleticism. And just clean up his defense. And I think his defense has been cleaned up if he wasn't looking for the one big punch tonight. You know, and I think that's just the difference. He just, you know, I think the biggest takeaway for him is just be comfortable in your own boxer skin. That's it. That's it. Just be comfortable, you know, with your attributes. You know, power fade anyway when you go up. So, but yeah, let me know what you guys think. Devin Haney went unanimous decision 116. One, was it 116, 112? I think it was. Uh, yeah, 117, 11, two times. So, yeah, let me know what you guys think. Check the fight reaction playlist out. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. If you have business questions, prior response, video plus all that's in the description. Uh, run at the bottom of your screen. Want to make a financial donation? Cash app, CJ Good 313. Venmo, CJ Good 313. PayPal link in the description. Appreciate the love and support. Let me know what's in the comments.